Are you ready, Jack? I could be. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> My bad. I'm not sure how to resolve this. <laughs> Completely honest. So, uh, Pandora, Passwords, and You. I'm going to be talking about the recent kind of Pandora uh, hack and password debacle they had. Um, so first off, I want to tell you about responsible disclosure. Um, you want to make sure that you're telling the companies that you're exploiting before you're telling your friends. You want to give them a chance to fix it before you go public with your exploit. Unless they ignore you, then all bets are off. Go public and have some fun with it. Um, so, why are passwords hard? Let's start with that. Uh, the problem is, a lot of developers don't actually know how to store passwords. Um, the idea is, you don't want to start plain text because if you get hacked, well, it's very easy to recover all those passwords and now you've got the default username and password for a bunch of people. So the idea is, we hash the password and we store it as a string that's correlated, but you can't reverse it. Uh, it relies on the principle that it is uh, easy to compute a hash, but hard to reverse it, hard to get a plain text password out of it. So a lot of the problems with uh, designing a crypto hash too um, is that they have weaknesses. Hash functions have weaknesses. Hashes have collisions. You can sometimes have text that hashes into the same number. So what does that mean in terms of passwords? Well, you might have more than one password uh, because there are collisions. So a secure hip crypto hash um, is something that tries to avoid collisions, something that is it takes a long time to compute on the hardware, but it's easy to verify. Uh, you gotta have enough bits of entropy, and uh, all of these things considered, there's a lot of misinformation. I promise this is still related to Pandora because uh, people thought that Pandora wasn't hashing passwords when they were storing it in their database. This upset a lot of people. Uh, so some Google engineers noticed that they could see their plain text password uh, on Pandora's site, and I got trended on Hacker News and Reddit. Um, now there are a bunch of hipster jokes, so I'm going to just kind of skip this slide, but I posted about it like about half a year ago, um, and when I looked at it, I noticed that they probably were hashing the passwords in the database. If you looked at the page, you saw lots of HTTP requests being made, but you couldn't find your password in there. There was one HTTPS request being made, and it had a whole bunch of account data that if you poked through, um, well, you couldn't find the password in the payload there either. So. The only other option is the password is somewhere locally. Um, so if you looked in local storage, the password was stored there. Um, if, you de if you went through uh, Pandora's JavaScript, you realize that they do encrypt it, uh, and then they decrypt it and populate the form field. So uh, it was kind of false advertised. Uh, a lot of people didn't understand what was going on, and the vulnerability, a lot of people were saying, oh, you got to change your Pandora passwords. They were sent over HTTP, and that's not the case. Uh, Pandora has said that they were hashing them on the back end, but uh, locally they were stored encrypted. Why? I don't know. It didn't really make sense to me. But um, knowing this, I decided it was time to profit, get some karma on Hacker News and stuff. So I decided I'd gonna, I was going to write an exploit. Um, so the target's Pandora. I want to prove severity. Uh, I emailed them about this, and they, they completely blew me off. Uh, it's probably because they knew it was encrypted on the front end, and they thought there was nothing wrong with that. Uh, so. 
I thought, all right, let's steal some passwords. Let's uh, sniff out the passwords on the network because they do load a bunch of stuff over HTTP. We could maybe man in the middle of this. Um, midway through actually writing this exploit, they patched it. Uh, so I changed it to change passwords and take over Pandora accounts on your local network. Um, so the first step is getting my scripts on their website. So the challenge here is you've either got to find a cross-site scripting vulnerability to inject some JavaScript to run, or you can man in the middle everybody on your network because Pandora loads a bunch of resources over HTTP. Obviously man in the middle is the easy choice. So I went with a man in the middle proxy, it's a Python thing. Um, the API is very, very easy. You just had to define a response um, and it passes in a context and a flow object. The flow object has information about both the request, the HTTP request and response. So here all we're doing is we're checking to make sure that we're attacking Pandora.com. Otherwise, we ignore it. Um, if we are looking at the main JavaScript of Pandora, um, we want to go on, otherwise we want to return. And then uh, there's just a variable there that's holding a bunch of script that we'll get to later. But you just decode the response because HTTP requests are gzipped. Uh, you decode it, then you just append the script tag right to the content here, uh, and you've got my JavaScript being injected into Pandora's, and now my code runs on Pandora's website when you visit it from my network. Um, so the JavaScript exploit, uh, to know a little bit about Pandora, um, it's a single page web app. It loads everything via jQuery's um, address plugin. So I think, it's, I think it's actually Backbone. It's a Backbone app that uses the jQuery address plugin to do the navigation, but it's a single page site. So the JavaScript you run on there runs once. It loads once, lo uh, runs once, unless you refresh the page. So knowing this, it's very easy to just define a variable in JavaScript that says, have we stolen the attacker, or have we stolen this account yet? Yes or no. If we haven't, then we navigate to the form to reset the password, reset their password, uh, and then send it back to a command and control server that I have running on my local host. Um, and then uh, the thing is also the challenges of it being a single page site, it kind of loads content dynamically. Uh, it's harder to bind um, load events to elements that don't exist. So the way, uh, the way you handle that uh, is it's set up by a timer. If we've not stolen the account, we make a recursive call to steal the account again some uh, things that we need to do. Uh, we need to make sure that they're not on the account info page because if the account info page is continuously trying to load, it will never successfully load and we can't steal the password. If they're on the sign in page, they're obviously not logged in yet and we can't steal their password. So otherwise we just cycle. Um, so what did they do? I emailed them about this, I put it up on GitHub and I was hoping that they'd do something, so they did. Um, they actually fixed it. They took my recommendation, so I'll run it and show you. Um, so the API is actually rather, uh, the, the tech's rather easy to execute. Um, if we look at the readme here, it's pretty much you install the dependencies. Um, and then you just run it. So this has started a local web server listening for request to pandora.com. If I reload my page, <laughs> Oh, hold on, I need to set my proxy. So the point is you'd run this software on like your router or you'd get a box in between your router and the, uh, <coughs> apologies, and the modem to man in the middle of these people. Uh, instead of doing that here, uh, I'm just going to set Firefox to connect through my proxy, which is gonna emulate the man in the middle attack. So I should have connected to it. If we reload my Pandora, You'll see it navigates me to account info. It will try to change my password, which they've now blocked with the password confirmation screen uh, and has not saved it. Um, but it still notified me that it tried to steal my account down here. Any questions? Yeah. So your exploit JavaScript is running on the victim machine? Yes. So I noticed your post was to localhost. How does that work? So the idea, okay, yeah, you, you would need to configure that. And uh, the actual, re uh, the code base I have has it configured. Um, right here, it's my localhost because that's where it's running. <coughs> and it replaces the value using string comprehension in Python. 
So you do have to configure it a bit. Uh, this is not gonna be an exploit that's gonna work right out of the box for you. But the whole idea is you'd run it on your router anyways, not on your own box. Um, it took them about a day or two to fix. They did not email me though to tell me they fixed it. <laughs> yeah. They would defend against the man in the middle, yes, if they actually loaded any resources over HTTP <coughs> HTTPS. see. Talk to me after, let's keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you.